Chapter 16 Energy Resources Disproportionate amount of energy resources demanded and consumed in developed countries. So this has become a major problem when it comes to the energy resources because it's not um, distributed among the countries among the world in the same um, same quantities so we are running into different issues with the energy resources so some countries use different uh, alternate energy resources than other countries because the they don't have money to deal with these different energy resources so we will be talking about different types of energy resources and what we are using as the energy resource and we are going to figure out a lot of things and how this is going to affect the environment so that's the major important thing so the growing challenges would be how to break energy dependency yet sustain development and high standard of living and energy shocks is constant worries from past to present and to the future or the price dependency power failure benefits of oil it's undeniable and also the problems associated with oil is unquestionable so the peak oil the time when half of earth oil extracted and used so oil is a non-renewable and being consumed too fast so consequences would be growing demands water pollution air pollution global warming global economic and political instability as you can see in this chart you can see the net imports production and consumption consumption is always higher for the oil fossil fuels the 90 percent of u.s energy consumption is fossil fuel so what are the fossil fuels the fossil ferrous fuels means fossil ferrous plant and animal material fossil fuels non-renewable resources and fossil fuel peak discoveries in 1960s and here is the energy supply and demand the petroleum natural gas coal biomass hydroelectric power nuclear electric power over the years since to 1950 to 2010 the types of energy different types of energies that we are dealing with are light energy electrical energy chemical energy thermal energy mechanical energy and nuclear energy so what is the unit that you're using to measure energy the energy unit is the energy capacity to do work so that's in joule either gigajoule exajoule or quad so these are the different units that you use to express the energy the power is the rate of energy transferred or used like your light bulb has the 65 watt or 100 watt so watt is the unit transformed from solar energy originally stored in organic matter that is fossil fuels so fossil fuels are organic matter buried and preserved as fossil fuels geologically these are stored in subsurface rock materials there are different types coal petroleum that is oil and natural gas so environment impact significant impact from exploration production and processing and distribution of these different types of fossil fuels coal resources so under these fossil fuels the coal resources are very important because this is one of the most important energy resource in the united states the america has more coal than any other fossil fuel resources and 20 percent of the U total u.s energy consumption is fossil fuel coal in particular the united states has more coal reserves than any other single country in the world so one quarter of all the known coal in the world is in u.s if you think about this 38 out of 50 states we have large coal deposits the coal has transformed plant matter in ancient swamps like when you have plant material buried within the sediments and they become coal and if you think about the animal material animal debris they buried within the sediments with the time they become oil or petroleum so when it comes to coal they are transformed plant matter in ancient swamps like estuaries lagoons low-lying coastal plains or delta environments the coal forming process is massive dead plants buried in an anaerobic that means anoxic environment that is no oxygen or less oxygen 
the become peat and prolong bury and transformation to increase carbon content so that's become coal and this is the process of formation of coal from swamps and they undergoes these different anoxic conditions and compress of peat form coal the based on carbon content and calorific, uh, calorific value on combustion you can categorize coal into different categories it, they are called lignite subbituminous bituminous or anthracite so with the increase in rank the generally higher carbon content has the higher calorific values and less volatile gas and less moisture content based on sulfur content you have low high and medium coal the coal distribution and consumption so the world reserves about thousand billion metric tons relatively evenly distributed throughout the world US reserves 25% of the world reserves annual global consumption is 5 billion metric tons China US and Russia account for 50% of total carbon dioxide release that is not good that's a warm gas and you will heat up the atmosphere causing the global warming this is the distribution chart for coal lignite subbituminous bituminous and anthracite considering the heat and the percentage wise you can see the carbon content volatiles and moisture impact on coal mining the land disturbances from open pit and stripe mining mining area acid drainage we talked about acid mine drainage that's a big environmental issue subsidence over subsurface mines and surface water and groundwater pollution and air pollution from thermoelectric power plant the area ecosystem degradation due to mining practice and offered inadequate land reclamation so this is some impact of coal mining future use and environmental impacts of coal so the more and more land will be strip mined so disposal of coal ash can be a problem so mining processing disposal of mining waste shipping burning and disposing of ash all potentially adverse to environment so fly ash from burning finely ground coal in a power plant is hazardous the use of coal releasing huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that's a big factor for global warming hydrocarbon oil and gas so they are called hydrocarbons because of the chemical composition they are having carbon hydrogen oxygen in the the compound natural gas is mostly methane ch4 and oil and gas formed from transformation of organic matters we talked about it heavily mined through production wells and other forms are oil shale or tar sands they are also hydrocarbons the formation of oil and gas once again if you summarize the process that's rapid burial of the plant and animal debris anaerobic environment and biogenic or thermogenic transformations oil window that's approximately three to six kilometer depth and formation of oil and gas and they need to be trapped over geologic time in certain structures for example anticlines are the places that you can see this preservation of oil so usually like sandstones or the porous rocks they tend to store this oil until they find then they needs to be capped by impermeable rock layer so that they can preserved within that sandstone layer geologic conditions are important when it comes to oil and gas source rock is the fine grain organic rich sedimentary rocks then oil and gas migrating upward to the reservoir rocks so the this is where you're going to produce oil and gas that's called the source rock and then it's going into the reservoir rock where you're going to store the oil and gas so that should be porous and permeable and then the cap rock like the roof should be impermeable as a barrier to trap oil and gas in place forming oil fields production the commonly through wells oil and gas production so there are 
different types of production, the primary recovery and enhanced recovery. The primary recovery means pump no more than 25% of the petroleum in the field under natural reservoir pressure. Enhanced recovery means manipulate reservoir pressure by injecting gases and liquid 50 to 60% of the petroleum. Distribution of oil and gas almost exclusively from sedimentary rocks younger than 500 million years. Nearly 85% of the total production in less than 5% of production fields. Nearly 65% of the total production from about 1% of giant fields. Most giant oil and gas fields near recently active plate boundaries in the last 70 million years. So here is the distribution of oil and gas in the picture. The countries where you can find oil in higher quantities. Those are Middle East countries. So it's billions of barrels, like 754 billions of barrels, 62% of total reserves. It's in Middle East. So again, remember, this is not only coal, this is oil and gas. Natural gas, the larger global reserve lasting 100 years at current rate of consumption, the most reserves in Russia and Middle East, cleaner fuel than oil and coal, so methane hydrate may be future alternative to energy resource, that is more uh, biology related and hydrothermal environments, you can talk about methane hydrates. Coal bed methane, so the coal containing a large amount of methane, that's CH4, carbon and hydrogen. The methane reserves in uh, the sufficient for US in Wyoming. So natural gas used for five years. The most coal bed methane shallow and more economical to drill. The concerns over extraction pro processing and transportation. So that can be a big issue. Lots of environmental problems associated with production such as disposal of salty water, a flammable process and erosion. The potential good source of natural gas is methane hydrate, exists at depth of 1000 meters beneath the sea and under permafrost land areas. White ice-like compound of methane gas capsulated by frozen water. So complicated processes for exploration and production due to high pressure ice conditions. More studies need to be done for exploring this methane hydrate. The impact of exploration and production. So the land distribution disturbances, especially access and drilling, and also environmental impact like production, transportation and emissions from refinery and byproducts like salty brine water evaporation and waste disposal problems comes in. Oil field development in sensitive areas, it's another issue, and blowouts of fire at oil and gas wells, and also acid rain because of the higher amounts of toxic gases emission, and that's going to mix up with the water and forming acid rain. The oil shales and tar sands, the best known oil shale in the United States is found in Green River Formation, approximately 44,000 square kilometers in Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming. So nearly 2 trillion in the United States, two-thirds of the world's oil shale. Tar sands contain tar oil and asphalt and other semi-solid or solid petroleum products. So tar sands, not necessarily sandstone, can be shale, limestone or consolidated sediments. The approaching the peak oil time, the future of oil. About 3 trillion barrels of oil be recovered. The world current consumption rate is 30 billion barrels per year. So estimated the peak production is 2020 to 2050 is a large amount. And the significant oil production in US not extend beyond 2090. So we need to think about how to limit the usage of the current oil because that's it's a non-renewable resource and we're going to running out of it pretty soon. The planning, education, research and development on alternate energy resources are important. Acid rain, a regional or global environmental problem. The both wet and dry acid deposition like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides, they become 
sulfuric and nitric acids when they mix with water. So that's going to cause a lot of damage on geology and changes in climatic pattern and types of vegetation and the composition of soils get affected with this. The fossil fuel and acid rain, so you can see the highly sensitive areas for acid rains in the United States and low sensitive areas. Nuclear energy, 440 nuclear reactors provide 16% global electricity needs, mostly from fission of uranium to 35. 0.7% concentration naturally enriched to 3% before used in a reactor. The average natural concentration is 2 ppm. The distribution of uranium must have a concentration factor of 400 to 2500 times to be mined at a profit. So three types of common deposits, the sandstone impregnated with uranium, veins of uranium bearing materials, and all place deposits. Risk with fission reactors, the various amounts of radiation to environment and from mining, processing, transportation, and before, transport, before transportation. The potential nuclear reactor accidents and examples like Chernobyl and also nuclear weapons, terrorist activity and possibly war, so disposal of nuclear waste. So the nuclear power is good, it's, uh, but there are a lot of problems coming with it. The combining lighter elements to produce heavier ones that releasing energy. So that's what called the nuclear energy from fission, fusion, F-U-S-I-O-N, the sun and other stars huge nuclear fusion reactors. Nuclear fusion is research objective, not a commercial real reality yet, luckily. So environment is a little radioactive waste, unlimited supply, and the technology is under the development. So before you're using the nuclear energy, you need to know the best technology and how to deal with the environmental issues coming after it. The geothermal energy is related to the geology, so extracting energy associated with heat and pressure from natural hot water and steam. You may have heard about some hot water springs around, especially if you travel to the Yellowstone National Park um, and also Colorado, Utah, Oklahoma, there are warm water spring sites and generating electricity at many sites of world heating energy for buildings. So, you're using this hot water, the natural hot water or the steam in order to um, use that, convert into the energy and use it for the other um, energy requirements. So the vast majority of geothermal energy resources, um, only 1% could be captured from upper 10 kilometers. So they are deep seated. So that's why the geothermal energy means the temperature pressure increasing when it when you go down the subsurface. When you go deeper and deeper, temperature and pressure increases. So the risk of, with geothermal energy would be overall environmentally friendly with a great potential for future energy, expensive production process because it's deep seated, needs to come out. And also thermal pollution from hot waste waters is a problem and also land subsidence while you're mining for this so the land can get unstable and land subsidence can be expected at present relatively local and regional operations. The renewable energy resources. So we talked about non-renewable energy resources and the renewable energy resources would be solar energy. It's rapidly growing and hydropower, hydroelectricity, tidal power and biofuels, wood, charcoal, burning of municipal waste. Currently only 1% of US municipal waste are recovered for energy and 10% can be extracted. 30 to 50% of waste for energy in Western Europe. And wind power is less than 1% global electricity demand but 10% potential in few decades. So that's something to think about. The conservation, efficiency and cogeneration highly variable future supply of and demand for energy. So need to minimize energy demand and adjust energy uses. Increase energy efficiency through improve or new technologies. Congeneration, that's capture and use some of the waste heat rather than direct release to the atmosphere. 
So energy policy for the future. So a hard path is continuing business as usual. Environmental problems due to use of local resources and industrialization and technology bringing solutions to the problems and dominate energy planning in US. A soft path is emphasis on energy alternatives, renewable, flexible, decentralized and environmentally more binning than those of hard path. Sustainable energy policy. So energy planning for the future is complicated, necessary to find useful long-term resources of energy without causing atmospheric pollution. So transition from the hard to soft path involving continued use of fossil fuel. So energy path is satisfying modern society needs without endangering the planet. And along these lines, these are some critical thinking ideas that you should work out and also make sure that you understand what is fossil fuel and how do they form and where do they um, located especially when it comes to geology and talk about different alternative energy resources that you can think of and talk about and think about this as the global issue and um, if you do have any questions please feel free to email me or put your questions in the blackboard that's the end of the chapter 16